Hello, this is Jeremy Zimmerman from Colorado School of Mines, and today I will be talking about Miller-Bravi notation, which is used for directions and planes in hexagonal materials. This video extends the ideas of families of planes and directions into hexagonal crystals. After this video, you should be able to explain the motivation for using Miller-Bravi notation. You should be able to identify families of planes and directions in hexagonal systems, and you should be able to convert back and forth between Miller and Miller-Bravi notation. This is important because most people that work with hexagonal materials use Miller-Bravi notation for labeling planes and directions. But if you're going to do crystallographic calculations, you need to convert back to Miller notation to do this. So I'm showing a crystal on the upper right here, and it's cubic, and we have shown a direction uh, pointing straight up with this pink arrow. And this is the 001 direction. This 001 direction is equivalent to five other directions in this particular crystal, which are shown here. These are just different permutations of, of the one or negative one in the different locations. These could have been generated by picking different valid coordinate systems. So we could have just oriented the coordinate system with A up, B up, or C up. As well, A, B, or C could have pointed down. So we write this group of possible directions up here as the 100 family of directions. There is a similar logic to it that applies to families of planes. Now the choice of your coordinate system orientation really shouldn't impact the notation of a family and it shouldn't make different equivalent directions look completely different. And in most systems such as cubic, the members of a family um, are just equivalent allowed permutations of these u, v, and w indices. On the right, I am showing the edge of a plane that is perpendicular to the screen. Using Miller indices, it intersects A1 at 1 and A2 at 1. This is also parallel to C, so the intersection is at infinity. So if we take the inverse of each of these intersections and we reduce them if necessary, you get the 110 plane. However, in a hexagonal lattice, there are six valid choices of the A axes. So we started with A1 and A2, but you can also have A3. If we had picked A1 and A2, you get the blue unit cell here. If you had picked A2 and A3, you would then define this blue, red unit cell. And if you had picked A3 and A1, you would then define the green unit cell. To make things a little bit more complicated, there's another set of three axes you could have picked from, A4, A5, and A6. Again, you could pick any two of these to define um, uh, other unit cells than defined here. So if we go back to the beginning, like, and we pick A1 and A2 for our, our vectors for defining our unit cell, they, we got this 1, 1, 0 plane. If we had picked A2 and then A3 instead, the intercept with A1 is 1, the intercept with A3 is minus a half, and Z is still at infinity. So we take the inverse and reduce, and you get the 1, 2 bar, 0 plane. The other choices of axes, if we had picked from these, these other four options, would have led to these different planes. So permuting the indices in this system does not work. It would be really nice if we had a notation where equivalent planes are recognizable regardless of which axes you arbitrarily picked. So we use something called Miller-Bravi notation. This is a four index system. It will use H, K, I, and L. And these correspond to indices for A1, A2, A3, and C. If we do this with this four index system, the intercept with A1 is one, A2 is one, A3 is minus a half, and C is infinity. Again, we use the, the normal process. We take the inverse of each one, and you reduce it if necessary, um, and you get the one, one, two bar, zero. Now, if finding A3 is difficult, because sometimes it is, it's helpful to know that H, K, and I have to sum to zero, or, I is just the negative of the sum of H and K. Now, if you want to convert from Miller to Miller-Bravi for planes, 
all we do is we insert this i equals minus h plus k into this notation right here. So you, you get 1, 1, 0 oh becomes 1, 1, 2 bar O, oh, 1, 2 bar O oh becomes 1, 2 bar 1, O, oh, et cetera. If you want to convert back from Miller to Miller Brav I for planes, all you do is delete the I. So um, you delete it and you get HKL. And we're done. So the 1, 1, 2 bar just becomes 1, 1, 0, et cetera. Now, hexagonal directions are decidedly more complicated. So we have a red vector here. And this red vector could be described by going one in the A1 direction and then one in the A2 direction. But we could have also just gone one in the minus A3 direction. And so we have a problem. So um, with Miller notation, this just would have been the one, one, O oh direction. Um, the equivalent directions are given here, and these, these various permutations of ones and zeros, but they didn't follow our normal permutation rules. So we want this self-consistent way to describe any vector using all three of the a1, a2, and a3 basis vectors. So there is a miller bravi notation for directions, and so all we do is we introduce the a3 vector and a t index in this u, v, t, w, notation. By inspection, what we talked about up here is A3 is defined to be equal to minus the sum of A1 and A2, or A1, A2, and A3 have to add to zero. Crystallographic directions are defined as we have right here, um, where we have these indexes in front of our, our unit cell um, defining vectors. And for this to be generally true in this system where A3 is related to A1 and A2, U, V, and T also have to sum to zero, or T is just minus U plus V. So how do we convert between the two? Well, we have to do a little bit of math. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a general form of a direction for miller bravi notation on the left, and the general form of a direction for Miller notation on the right. In the Miller notation, I'm going to use a primed U, V, and W. So we want to eliminate these two variables from here because they're, they're going to cause us some problems. And luckily, we've already defined that we know that T in terms of U and V and A3 in terms of A1 and A2. So we just insert these two relations up into this upper equation as I've done here. We now multiply these out and rearrange them, and we get this equation here. From this, we pull out uh, groups, parts of this equation that are all related to the same vector. So if we just look at all of the terms in this equation that are related to A1, we pull this out here, we divide by A1, and we get that U prime is equal to 2U plus V. You can do the same thing for the A2 vectors, and you get that V prime is equal to 2V plus U. W prime just e times C equals W prime times C, W times C, or W prime just equals W. Now, if you want to go from Miller notation back to Miller Bravi notation, you need to flip this so that you have U as a function of U prime and V prime, um, or V in terms of U prime and V prime, etc. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the relationships we built on the last slide. And we need to solve these for u. So the way that we can do this is we can take these first two equations and we can solve for u by eliminating v. So what we'll do is we'll take the first one, multiply it by negative 2, and take the second term. We're just going to sum these together. And you're going to get that minus 2u prime plus v prime is minus 3u. We divide by minus 3 to turn, so we can get u by itself. And you get u is 1 third of 2u prime minus v prime. Now we could have done this for, for V prime or U prime or W prime as well. Or, and if you do this, you get the following relationships. This is our whole set of transformations. So let's do an example now. So we have this red vector here, and if we're using Miller notation, we're gonna use A1 and A2. So to get this red vector, we're gonna go one, two, three, in the A1 direction and one in the A2 direction. 
So this gives us the 3, 1, 0 direction. But if we want this in miller bravais notation using all four indexes, what we have to do is use these mathematical transformations we developed on the last slide. And if we do this and we plug in u prime is equal to 3 and b prime is 1, and do the math, you get that u is 5 thirds. You do the same math and you get v is minus a third, and t is minus 4 thirds. w is just equal to w prime, which is 0 in this case. And so if we want to see what this actually looks like, is we moved 5 thirds in the a1 direction, minus a third in the a2 direction, and then minus 4 thirds in the a3 direction. Now, we don't use fractional coordinates in crystallographic directions, so I multiplied these by 3 to find the smallest integers, and you get the 5, 1 bar, 4 bar, 0 direction. So the thing you have to remember is that for directions, you have to use the appropriate mathematical transformations for converting between Euler and miller bravais notation. So now I want to talk about how do we use this notation to identify members of a family. So for planes, um, all we do is we use miller bravais notation and you permute the h, k, and i, and we make sure that h, k, and i add to zero. So if you have the 1, 1, 2 bar, 0 direction, all we do is we permute these first three indexes. So we can put this 2 bar in any of those locations. And those are our three members of the family. Now, we could also take the negative of these first three indexes. And so the um, first three that we took are given in red here, and the second are purple. Um, you do treat L separately, so you can always have plus or minus L if it is a, a non-zero value. And there are higher maximum multiplicities possible. So if we had picked three different numbers here, um, you would have uh, more ways to permute these numbers. So you could have 12. So the 1, 2, 3 bar 0 has up to 12 members. The 1, 2, 3 bar 1 has up to 24 members. And But some symmetries do not have this many, this high multiplicity. So you do need to look at the International Table of Crystallography space group tables to truly know. Um, to get back to Miller, all we do is we delete the i from each of these, which I've shown up here. And for directions, you just do the exact same thing. You permute u, v, and t. You add negatives of the entire set, and we check to make sure that the, the u, v, and t sum to 0. Uh, w is treated separately, um, and if you want Miller, you have to use the conversions to go back to from Miller Broadway. Okay, so that's what we have for this video, but now I think you should be able to do the following. You should be able to explain the advantages of Miller Broadway notation as compared to Miller notation. You should be able to tell me which systems can Miller Broadway be applied to. You should be able to write an instruction set for finding the Miller and the Miller Bravi notation for a plane or a family. And you should be able to convert between the notations. So you should be able to convert 223 into Miller Bravi notation for both directions and planes. You should be able to find the other members as well. And you should be able to convert 134 bar 0 directions and planes into Miller notation. And you should be able to identify the other members of that family. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in class.